like at this time to call the Board of Repair School Board regular session to order. This is for Thursday, May 12, 2022. First item of business is to request Mr. Larry Holly, uh, instructional supervisor here at the central office, to lead us in a word of prayer and the Pledge of Allegiance. Pulling double duty this week. Yes, sir. We appreciate it. If you would, please stand and bow your head. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your bounty and your blessing. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you that we've lived to see another day, and we hope and with your will and guidance we'll live throughout the rest of this week and into years to come. We just want to thank you for the gift of life and how you have blessed us abundantly. Tonight, Lord, I ask that you would bless each and every person under the sound of my voice. Let your anointing and your wisdom be over our decisions that are made and that as we guide our parish into the future. And I pray for our <clears throat> city, country, our, can our parish, our state, and our nation. I pray you have your hand of mercy and protection upon us and upon everyone within this building. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Attention, salute, pledge. Thank you, Lord. Oh, I'm sorry, I was praying again. I'm so used to it. All I can say is you know where my heart's at. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. First item of business will be to consider the agenda for the meeting. I'll let you get pick up a copy of the agenda. I'll entertain a motion at this time to adopt the agenda as presented. So moved. Been moved by Mr. Jones. Second. Second by Ms. Bruner. Any corrections to the minutes? I mean, not minutes, the agenda. Okay. Hearing none, Chair will ask for a vote. All in favor of adoption of the agenda as presented, indicate so by saying yes. Yes. And all opposed, indicate so by saying no. And is officially adopted. First item on the agenda. To consider adopting the minutes of the March 31st, 2022 special meeting of the Board of Repair School Board as published in the official journal. Did everyone get a copy of the minutes of the special meeting? Have a chance to look at it. Any corrections? Hearing none, Chair will call for a vote. All in favor of adoption of the minutes of the March 31st, 2022 special meeting of the Board of Parish School Board <coughs> as published in the official journal indicate so by saying yes. yes. Any opposed indicate so by saying no. I'll Ms. Minutes are adopted as public. Item number two, to consider adopting minutes of the April 11th, 2022 regular meeting of the Board of Parish School Board as published in the official journal. All of you get a copy of your minutes. Okay, any corrections? Mr. Bedrine, I, I made a motion regarding the Board of our Parish organizational chart to table that motion. It's not captured in the minutes. I'm not sure if it used to be captured or not. Okay, Ray, uh, tell me out. What was your motion? Uh, to table the discussion of the Board of our Parish organizational chart. Well, we can't table discussion. We table motions. So was there a motion? A motion to table the discussion, yes. A motion to table discussion. Yes. Well, basically, we don't we don't have a motion to table discussion. Uh, I thought it was an action item on the agenda. It, it could have been. It right. could have been if a if a formal motion had been presented in second, and then is when you'd say, "Well, I'll take. I move to take." Okay. Well, I didn't move to table it. But he didn't receive a second. Right. And second. even at that, I would have probably, <clears throat> not to upset you, would have said, well, we're out of order here. 
we, we don't okay. table discussion. We don't, you know, present a motion to table discussion. Okay. That's fine. I just didn't know if it needed to be in the minutes. All right. I think Ms. Archer uh, read the minutes and thought she did a pretty good job in capturing the, the, that we did discuss it and the points Mr. Cooley was trying to get across and some of the concerns of the board members, yours included. Right stuff was, was captured in the minutes. So uh, fair enough. Uh, now anytime you don't agree with the sheriff's ruling, if it's right or anyone, you can rise to a point of order, say what you disagree with, what you think it should be. The chair then has to address it. If you still don't agree, then you can bring it to a vote and the board will decide, you know, whether the chair is right or the speaker's right. Okay, well, we're back to adoption of the minutes of the April 1st, 2022 meeting. Everyone's gotten a copy. We're ready to vote. All in favor of the motion? Well, so moved. Moved by Mr. Jones. Second. Second by Ms. Jackson. Any further corrections suggested? Hearing none, we'll vote. All in favor of adoption of the minutes of the April 11th, 2022 regular meeting of the Board of Repair School Board as published in the official journal indicate so by saying yes. 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 Any opposed indicate so by saying no. Mr. Manuel abstain. Minutes are adopted as published. Item number three, to hear the superintendent's report. Mr. Cooley. We will first call on Ms. Kylie Jill Boone, our student rep. Good evening, members of the board. I'm going to share with you the information I've come across from around the parish to cover the month of April. I'm enjoying every day of representing the students of Bogart Parish. All of our schools are wrapping up state testing and nearing the end of the school year with class parties and fun activities. K.R. Hanchi had an autism awareness event on April 10th. Following this event, the next week they had a career day for their students. All students attended the McNeese Rodeo on April 6th and 7th. All students participated in Easter egg hunts and parents' family were invited to attend. Kindergarten and first grade students participated in PE play day on April 29th. 76 first graders participated in a field trip to Bryant Park and had a petting zoo at the park for reaching their accelerated reader goals. Pinewood faculty and staff enjoyed the many treats they received for Teacher Pre Appreciation Week. Testing is almost over and everyone will breathe a sigh of relief on Friday afternoon. The students will be enjoying adventures through field trips. Pinewood Science Explorers have been to Galveston and NASA in Houston. They have classes enjoying a swamp tour in the Atchafalaya Basin, a trip to the Avery Island Tabasco Factory and Jungle Gardens, and a trip to the Houston Museum of Natural History. After testing, they will have awards day, fourth and fifth grade field trips, Kona Ice for students, faculty, and staff. There's never a dull moment at Pineland. South Borgard Elementary will be resuming their beloved field day for the first time since COVID. The staff and students are very excited. South Borgard Upper Elementary's Drama Club performed a play in front of their entire school. They promoted anti-bullying. South Borgard Upper Elementary Student Council provided the teachers with different treats throughout the week. These treats consisted of watermelon slices, breakfast burritos, and nothing but cakes to end their week on a sweet night. In high school, quite a few track and field athletes across the parish received a state medal this weekend while competing in Baton Rouge. Trinity Spooner of SBHS received first place in Javelin, Lila and Chase of EBH placing third in the 400 meter dash and the high jump. Unfortunately, none of our baseball teams proceeded to the state finals. Although Our Lady Trojans from Eastbow made it to the third round of playoffs in the 1A category. South Borgard's band and Nightline traveled to Winter Park, Colorado for the Winter Park Music Festival where they competed. Both the band and Nightline came home with best in class and first place trophies. 
We are all wrapping up testing and getting ready for graduation and the most exciting of all, summertime. But to keep it interesting, my school, South Borgard, has been living in a sauna because their air conditioner has been broken since April. Monday was approximately 82 degrees in the upstairs biology classroom. Ms. Disclare, biology teacher, had eight fans in her room to keep the students cool as they worked on the end of the year work. As a matter of fact, the air conditioning units at South Borough have broken every year in April, May since I was in seventh grade. During state testing, the air conditioner was partially broken to the point where we were sweating as we were trying to test to get the state the ideal score they want out of us. And also, after I wrote my report, I found out that Mr. Ramsey and Mr. Darren brought portable air conditioners to our school. DHS Student Council provided breakfast to their teachers for a Teacher Pre Appreciation Week while their Beta Club provided lunch. Soaring into East Bow was stewardess Marcy Dobbs providing students and teachers with the flight experience. She served them lunch and made them think that they were really on a trip to France. This was a perfect way to kick off testing and lunch around the campus. <coughs> Monty Woods of Derrida High School shared with me what is on her mind along with many other FBLA sponsors' minds, and I quote, we have been fundraising, seeking donations, and asking our supervisor for financial assistance to help defray some of the expenses for this trip. Hotel, no tax exempt offered, and airline costs are so expensive. Several schools in the parish will be representing Borgard Parish, our local city town, our school, and the state of Louisiana at the 2022 FBLA National Leadership Conference in Chicago, Illinois in June. All that is left of our first almost normal school year since COVID and hurricanes our award celebrations and graduations. Thank you so much for listening to my student rep report. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Lindsay Sloggett will be here in place of the Colonel the Garrison Commander Report. Good evening. I'm Lindsay Sloggett. Um, I'm one of the school liaison and officers, and I've been here actually for a year um, and really enjoying these parishes. Um, and I really got to enjoy it yesterday as we traveled from school to school, um, handing out recognitions to the teachers and also to your students that just really excelled at different places. Y'all have a very large parish. We drove to every school, very fun. But I also wanted to invite you all on the board to this recognition. It's the JRTC and Fort Polk Academic Excellence Recognition Ceremony. It'll be on May 17th at 6 p.m. Um, we would love to have you there and to see your students and your teachers there. Um, there is an RSVP number. If you could let us know, we would love it. Um, but please come. And thank you for allowing me to join this parish and see you guys. Thank you. <coughs> Every year, as part of the we, uh, Louisiana guidelines. We have to give a board member training summary. Uh, Ray Bowman, six hours received. That's Kathy Bruner, 6.5. Gary Green, 6.0. Cassie Henry, 5.0. Arthur Jackson, 6.0. Casey Jones, 6.0. Darren Manuel, 7.0. Wesley Taylor, 6.0. David Vidreen, 6.0. Nikki Weldon, 6.0. For total training of 60.50 hours for 2021. Uh, high school graduation ceremonies are beginning tomorrow night with Singer High School, Monday night East Fulgard High School, Wednesday night South Fulgard High School, Thursday night Maryville High School, and Friday night DeRitter High School. So if you get an opportunity to attend those, uh, gives you an idea of when they will be uh, being held. We'll our students right. Uh, you have a copy of that in your folder tonight. Special thanks to our teachers and Ms. Gary Yiplin for this book of memories uh, that is provided to those who have uh, poetry or stories published. Uh, with the sabbatical of our Title I Director for 22-23, uh, we will be advertising for an acting supervisor for Title I. And with Mr. Markle retiring, we will also be advertising for his supervisor position uh, in the coming days. Uh, reminder, last day for students in four-day schools will be Thursday, May 26th, and five-day Wednesday, May 25th. For teachers, be the following day, four-day Friday, May 27th, five-day Thursday, May 26th. Summer school will begin Tuesday, May 31st, and will run through Wednesday, June 29th. 
Uh, the River High School is currently working with the National Federation of High Schools, uh, with the Network School Broadcast Program for broadcast of sports activities. Uh, we are in the process of getting advice from our legal counsel and whatnot, and we'll be uh, finalizing that project for 2022-2023 as soon as possible. I figure we will have other schools that will probably be wanting to get involved in this. Uh, so as we get those applications, uh, we will work with our legal counsel to make sure that we are meeting all the necessary needs. Uh, that is something that is going on throughout the state right now, a uh, big thing. So uh, we wanted to make sure we were following all the protocols that need to be followed. Uh, Ms. Andrea Ferguson, a career high school nurse, also our coordinator for the parish, is a semifinalist for Louisiana High School, our Louisiana School Health Provider of the Year. Uh, she will be attending the vesting meeting in June, and they will reveal the final results. So uh, we will be attending that. And that completes superintendent's report, Mr. Thank you. Any questions from Mr. Cooley? Mr. Cooley, what, what are we going to receive, like our ACT scores, graduation rate, stuff like that? <coughs> I was looking at the minutes. I couldn't find anything in the past year. We have not gotten them yet. Not gotten them yet. No, I'm not sure of the day. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I will check. Try to let you know. Anything else? ACT scores kind of coming in spurts, but graduation will be later. Okay, thank you again, Mr. Cooley. Item number four, to receive the budget for fiscal year ending 2022-2023. Good evening, everybody. Thank you, board members, for the opportunity this evening to give an overview of our proposed fiscal year end budget for 2023. This is the second budget that I have been able to present to you, and I would like to thank you for your continued stewardship for our community. Please know that this proposed budget continues some of the basic commitments that I believe that we all share, which are to be, to be basically physically responsible, to be compassionate, and to make wise investments for the future of our students, staff, and schools. I'd like to give you a basic fiscal year overview. We are presenting an operational budget for Beauregard Parish School Board with total projected revenues of $90,956,747 to include all federal, state, and local sources with an overall increase of 7% of, for Beauregard Parish total revenues from last year's budget. Beauregard Parish School Board's operational budget's total expenses for fiscal year end 2023 are projected to total $89,414,446. To summarize, we are presenting a balanced budget with cash balances and projected revenues greater than projected expenses. You have been given the more specific financial details this evening in the form of our 2023 annual budget. As I know you have just received this this evening, I will be more than glad to make myself available to any of you at any time for any questions you may have regarding the specific financial details before our next board meeting. Did you have any questions I could ask you this evening? I know we have a full agenda. Actually, I'd like to say something quick, if you will. Well done. This is a very, very big deal. We have, we were begging for this for years, and so you got it done as requested, on time. Very well done. Thank that you means so a lot. much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Ash. You're welcome. Thank you. You're on my apple. It's okay. I was expecting it to be at least one and it to be from you, but that's good. Go ahead, Mr. Manuel. So the increase in our revenues, is that going to be from local? That's going to be a combine of our federal, I'm sorry, from our FEMA proceeds. It's going to be a, from our insurance proceeds. It's also going to be from our indirect costs from our ESSER as well, all of which are going to be restricted revenues, but we're going to show those as well. But we are showing an increased revenue in ad valorem and um, in sales tax for, um, I want to say it was 90. I'd have to go back and, and look at it. Mm -hmm. I was just wondering where the money's coming from. That's perfectly good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're most welcome, sir. Okay. Let's go through the timeline again. 
you present it to us tonight, it's actually brought up for adoption in the next month. Next year. month, and the public has opportunity to. There will be one league here on this. You and comment also days. at the next board. I'd like to to thank our schools as well. They were given a pretty firm deadline on procurement this year so that we could stick to what we needed to do in order to get our reimbursements in on time by the end of the year from all of our, our federal grants. And they they did what they needed to do as well to stick to getting done what we needed to get done in order to have this budget done. It, it takes a village to have it done and we came together. So again, all of everybody watching, thank you. So, so our audit was a lot of time there. Yes. So, yes. Yeah. That was the whole biggest of the way. Mm -hmm. I'll miss, miss the adoption page or review. We've got public hearing on the ninth, adoption on the ninth. They are within 15 minutes. Miss Pan checked so, that. What was the notice of public hearing, notice of public inspection, June 20th? Should that be something? The later, it has to be done no later than that, right? I'm not sure of the how that specifically works. That's going to be on right on the second page, Mr. Cooley. May 20th. Okay. So I'll make a change to that. I can make a change to that page. After we adopt it, right? Yep. I'll change that page. Well, you know my telephone number, sir, for you to give me a call, and we're on that every day. <laughs> Any other questions at this time? Okay. So Moving on to the next one. Item five: to consider adopting a resolution concerning uninsured and underinsured motorist coverage. I'd like to present to you the uninsured, underinsured motorist bodily injury resolution. Please consider a resolution authorizing the superintendent to sign the required Louisiana under, uninsured, underinsured motorist, this is a tongue twister, motorist form reflecting the selection of or rejection of uninsured, underinsured motorist bodily injury coverage. Uh. Did we read the resolution? Is that what you just read? Yeah, I can read it again. Yeah, okay. just the part of what we're, <coughs> yeah. what we're actually going to be voting on, which is the delegation to of the superintendent. Okay. To the I'll read the whole thing. The following resolution should be placed in the minutes of Beauregard Parish School Board held on May 12, 2022. Agenda item number five to consider a resolution authorizing the superintendent to sign the required Louisiana uninsured, underinsured motorist form reflecting the selection of or rejection of uninsured, underinsured motorist bodily injury, injury coverage. Let me do this annually? Mm -hmm. right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This is the one. No, second. We always reject this. Is that what the board wants to do? Really, mm -hmm. this resolution is giving him the authority to, to sign it to the Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Want you to know what you voted on. Yeah, well, that's why I asked. Yeah, of course, Steve. Anybody have any objections? Okay, who was the second? I was. Second. <clears throat> Any discussion on it? Hearing none, Chair will call for a vote, even though this is a resolution. Uh, and do we have to record each individual vote? No. All we have to do is have a motion to second. All right. All in favor, indicate so by saying yes. 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 
All opposed indicate so by saying no. Resolution is adopted. Item number six, to consider and take action with respect to a resolution concerning millages. Again, this is another resolution I will read. Be it resolved that the following millages are hereby levied on the 2022 tax roll on all properties subject to taxation by the Burgard Parish School Board. Constitution tax, 5.12 mills. Parish-wide ma maintaining and operating, 9.25 mills. Parish-wide maintaining and operating, 22.52 mills. Parish-wide bond, principal, and interest, 17.80 mills. Be it further resolved that the proper administration officials of the Parish of Beauregard, State of Louisiana, be and they are hereby empowered, authorized, and directed to spread said taxes as herein above set forth upon the assessment roll of said parish for the year 2022 and to make the collection of taxes imposed for and on behalf of the taxing authority according to law and that the taxes herein levied shall become a permanent lien and privilege on all properties subject to taxation as herein set forth and collection thereof shall be enforceable in the manner provided by law. The foregoing resolution was read in full. The roll was called on the adoption thereof, and the re resolution was adopted by the following votes. Okay. Resolution is a written motion. So is there any discussion on the resolution? If not, Chair will call for a vote, and this one we will do a voice vote since we've got to Pardon the yeas and me. Start to my left, Ms. Weldon? Yes. Ms. Weldon's yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Jones is yes. Ms. Jackson? Yes. Ms. Jackson is yes. Chair votes yes. Mr. Manuel? Yes. Mr. Manuel is yes. Mr. Green? Yes. Ms. Green is yes. Ms. Bruner? Yes. Ms. Bruner is yes. Mr. Bowman? Yes. Ms. Bowman is yes. Resolution is adopted. Approved. <coughs> Item number seven, to consider approval of the physical agent agreement. I don't know if you want me to read the whole fiscal agreement, but okay. you have all been provided a, you have all been provided a copy of the fiscal agreement. Please consider and take action of our fiscal agent agreement with six banks to include B1 Bank, Burgard Federal Savings Bank, J.P. Morgan Chase Bank, First Federal Bank, First National Bank of Derrida, and Sabine State Bank. Those are the six banks. Is there a motion to Approve a fiscal agent <coughs> agreement with the six banks <coughs> mentioned. So moved. moved by Mr. Green, second by Mr. Manuel. Now there's one we've had that's shown up in the audit a couple of times. We still I think that one was yes, we've re resolved that one. So we still want to continue with. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. We we're understanding why that happened. So All right. yep. any discussion? Hearing none, the Chair will call for a vote. <coughs> All in favor of approving a fiscal agent agreement with each of the six banks mentioned, indicate so by saying yes. 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 Any opposed, indicate so by saying no. Six agreements are approved. Item number eight, to consider advertising for bids for playground equipment funded by grant proceeds at South Borgard Elementary. Yes, sir. Please consider allowing advertising for bids for playground equipment that will be funded by grant proceeds at our South Bow Elementary location. The proceeds come from Sempra Foundation. They respond to community needs, especially disaster relief. Early in 2021, Sempra responded to many locations from Texas to Louisiana 
which were devastated by not only winter storms, but also hurricanes. One of our bookkeepers, Ms. Deanna Habits, researched this grant further and she applied. The school was granted $50,000 and they were granted for the purchase of this said playground equipment and they are asking for us to go out for bid on this said equipment. I have a question. So is this grant um, made available to everyone? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So all the schools applied, but only South Florida government? I can't say if all of the schools applied. I know that South Bow Elementary found the grant and they, they had applied. Mm -hmm. It was available to all. Mm -hmm. I'll make that motion. Second. Moved by Mr. Manuel, second by Mr. Bowman to advertise for bids for playground equipment funded by the grant proceeds at South Florida Elementary. Any discussions? I'm gonna say I'm not jealous, but a proud party. <laughs> okay, hearing no further discussion or comments, all in favor of going out and advertising for bids for the playground equipment as mentioned, indicate so by saying yes. 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 Any opposed indicate so by saying no. Thank Robert you. Right, that's cool. Okay. So this is the end. Items nine. To hear recommendations from the finance committee. <coughs> a is a motion to issue a request for proposals for independent audit services <coughs> for the mandatory central office audit for a period of three years and it could include a separate quote for an audit of the 12 schools. If you remember, what we're doing here is uh, we have to do the audit of the central office every year. This is a slight change to where we're thinking it would be more effective and, and maybe it's broadened the amount of bids we get if we went with a three-year contract instead of a one-year contract. Uh, also, until we can get back to where the central office would be doing self audits of schools, uh, it just indicated that we might want to do the 12 uh, schools in, in the district. Now, if this is approved, we'll be looking at really two bids. One on what's just required by the state for the central office, and then one for the central office and including the 12 schools. Any questions? Just a, I'd like to clarify. So the the separate quote for the audit of the twelve schools would just be one time audit in the three year term, or would we, would we be expecting them to do that every year of the three year term? I, I would think it'd probably be the three year. That's what we talked about. On I asked, that's why I asked that same question. You know, in the past, we've gone two schools or decided for much each year. Any questions? Any further questions? Hearing none, Chair will call for a vote. All in favor of the motion to request proposals for independent audit services uh, as indicated for three years for the central office and for a separate one for an audit of the 12 schools indicate so by saying yes. 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 Any opposed indicate so by saying no. recommendation is approved. B, motion to liquidate fixed assets as listed. I don't know if we have a list. We, we were provided a list the other day. It was what, seven buses? Twelve. Twelve, Twelve buses. <coughs> Twelve buses. Uh, any discussion on that? <coughs> Hearing none, Chair will ask for a vote. All in favor of the recommendation to liquidate fixed assets of the 12 buses indicate so by saying yes. 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 And the opposed indicate so by saying no. Yes. Recommendation is approved. Item C, motion to adopt a resolution to approve Packaging, Packaging Corporation of America. And the request number is 202-00265, Industrial Tax Exemption. 
this is the one, or was it four million? We had a four million and a fourteen million. Now, for those of you in the audience, they're, they're not really, they don't get that much tax relief. The way it works is uh, they have to put a value on it. Uh, they can request that they be exempt for five years on 20% of it. No, on 80% of it, I'm sorry, on 80%. Uh, so by the time, if you looked at, let's say it's four million, and then you look at what's actually taxable on the items, and then you look at, there's a percentage that can be taxed, it's like 5% or 15%, I don't remember which one. And then you break down who receives the tax. School board gets the majority of it, in this case, because it's outside the city limit. I think it was like 54%. Sheriff's office gets a sizable amount. And then the Polish jury gets about 8%. But some of that with the Polish jury goes to the libraries, goes to other things. Anyway, in my simple math and then playing with it, you're looking at uh, <coughs> that comes down to about $35,000, $36,000. But anyway, uh, we looked at that and talked about it. Uh, all in favor of the recommendation uh, to approve the tax exemption request for Fact Incorporation of America indicates so by saying yes. Yes. Any yes. opposed indicates so by saying no. Item D, it's a second request from Package Incorporation of America. Uh, it was for it was more equipment, I guess is what I'm saying, but that was put in and stuff. I'd say 11 million? That sound right? And actually, actually, this one was like storage also. Yeah. Store motor, electric motors and stuff that they, they use Togo for right now. So they're doing their own building school, that kind of stuff. Uh, anyway, any discussion on it? Hearing none, there will call for a vote. All in favor of approving the Resolution for the Industrial Tax Exemption uh, from Package Incorporation of America, number 202-10291. Indicate so by saying yes. 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 Any opposed? Indicate so by saying no. The recommendation is approved. Item number 10, to hear recommendations from the Policy Committee. Item A is Move to approve revision of policy file JCBE public school choice with final adoption in June of 2022. Uh, okay, we have a green card on that. Let me ask that. Who is Mr. Johnson going to? Who's going to address this? Uh, uh, I mean, we addressed Monday night. And it comes as a motion from the committee. Well, I understand that, but in case there's a okay, sure, Mr. Johnson, right back here. Just tell us what we what we're doing here, Mr. Johnson. I think our state mandate said we have have some. Okay, I'm sorry, back up for me. What's going on? We're talking public about public school choice. Public school choice. File JCBE. Go okay. Uh, last summer, uh, this letter passed a law that said all schools. Uh, systems that have a school with a school performance score of D or F uh, have to have a school performance, uh, I'm sorry, a school choice option. So parishes all over the state were required to have that in place by January 31st. So uh, we passed that back in December, knowing that we have to come back and do a little cleanup to it. That's what we we're doing this month. We were defining capacity. Uh, we also needed to um, look at the beginning and ending dates of the application window if such an event such as a school receiving a DRF if that were to happen we have to have it in place so uh, it's all um, pre-planning I guess because right now we don't have a school that qualifies okay uh, we have a green card on this and, and that's one reason why I asked you to okay. for the person who filled out the green card's benefit to make sure we're clear on on what we're going to vote on or discuss on this stuff. Uh, Mr. Uh, Jasper Newsom, you, you, you fill out a card you'd like to address the board. Uh, 
Uh, Mr. Newsom, if you would, uh, we need for you to state your name and your address. And we try to limit the comments to five minutes. Okay. My name is Jasper Newsom. I'm the minister for the Board of God Church of Christ in Lady Ritter for the past 30 years. My address is 2495 Howie 190 West, Derrida, Louisiana. I don't quite understand school choice. How would school choice affect low income students or low income parents? who may not have the abilities to make the choice or the, the monies to make the choice that their school is failing. So can someone explain to me how would that work? <clears throat> this policy has set forth a public school choice allows if a school is in a D or F standing, that those parents would have the option to fill out an application for their child to attend a different school that would be of the A, B, C rating. In this policy, they would have to provide their own transportation in order to attend that school. Also, in those schools, if they are in a D or F rating, which we pray will never happen, but we don't know, they will also receive extra assistance, as we have some schools right now that are in CIR or UIR ratings, which they are receiving extra assistance at this time to make sure we don't get to a D or an F rating. So if it happened, and it's a possibility that it will, and no transportation is given to those parents who can't afford to go to a different school, and would they have to go to a school here in Border Guard Parish, or do they have a choice to go to Calcasieu or Vernon Parish? Uh, if Calcasieu or Vernon would accept them, they could go wherever their school of choice would be. Okay. And the parent would have to would have to uh, foot that bill. Right. And suppose the parent can't. What happens then? I mean, if, if that child, if, yeah. if, that's the reason we're going to put extra assistance in those schools to make sure we don't get to that point. Okay, that's a good idea. That's what we should do. But I'm just looking at the possibility if it if it happens. Right. What do we do then? You know, because because if 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 transportation is not provided then they would be in, uh, as they say in Korea, deep chemistry. Also realize, uh, Mr. Newsom, also there is a clause in there where it is 80% capacity in those schools uh, because at that point in time, you can't overload one school uh, where there may not be space available. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I understand that. So, <laughs> if for example, if, if our high school failed to make the proper grade, the, the A grade, and a parent want to send their child to another high school, there will be no transportation and they can't afford to go. So then, where would they go in, in the parish? Or what choices do they have in the parish? They were in a failing school. Mm -hmm. They could attend Maryville or Singer at the current time. But they would be required to, to provide their own transportation. And that is anyone who goes. Okay. But that's where the problem is. Providing the transportation. If, if you can't afford uh, to go from point A to point B, then yeah, that child is still in a predicament because they want to go to a school with the A rating 
but because of a lack of funds, they can't get there. There, there. I think we also have to consider the lack of funds to provide that transportation, wherever that transportation may be. I, I doubt there are very many parishes that are going to provide transportation in these situations. Well, I'm sure you're probably right. You're probably right about that. But uh, that does not uh, alleviate the problem. Mr. Newsom, if I could say something. Go ahead. Separate direction. Mm -hmm. But if we had that happen in our parish, there would be a whole lot of heat from us back on the superintendent or whoever the superintendent might be to turn that school around and not have that school in that situation. Because I suspect you're probably very close to this community in Ritter, and you would probably rather your children be able to be a part of the recovery of this school and to stay here in this community. I'm just looking at the what ifs. Uh, right. You know, there, there is a possibility if that, happens, that it can happen. That's and I'm trying to find, trying to seek a way where a low income family is able to get the proper education for their child if they're in a failing school. And, and if they can't afford to get there, then that child is in, a, is in a predicament. Their parent for that child is in a predicament because they can't get from point A to point B. I, I, they want to go to a school, but they don't have the funds to get there and they're between a rock and a hot place. I, I completely understand what you're saying. And again, whole separate direction. As a board, we're definitely going to try to do what we can to fix that school. I mean, I, I think all of us in here would be in agreement, including the superintendent. Right. Correct. That we're going to try to fix that school. Well, and, I, and I believe that. Because of the distance between Ritter and, you know, say, Lake Charles, I mean, you have charter schools that do provide transportation, but unfortunately, they're receiving lower grades in their school system from the state than what any of our schools are. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that option would be available more than likely because I do know that they do provide some transportation. But I don't know if you'd want to send, you know, send those children. Even if, if, you know? even if one had to go to, East, to South Florida or to East Florida, it would still be a burden on that family. Absolutely. You know, uh, as a matter of fact, my wife taught in South Borough for 24 years and bad the burden. So I know the trap, the trap was going to be in this class. Is that right? Yes, I was in English. I'll tell you. <laughs> okay. Hey. You must be a smart kid, then. Hey. <laughs> I was too. Were you? Okay. <laughs> she was, hey, she was actually Miss Brand back then. She was. I changed all that. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I, I'm serious, you know, because I hate to see a child left behind. That's what it's all about, Absolutely. our children. Absolutely. And I would hate to see a child left behind because they can't, because their parents can't afford to get them from point A to point B. You know, that, that would be a tremendous burden uh, on the child and a, an extreme burden also on the parent to get them where they want to go. Well, so, Mr. Newsom, I, I know we had um, discussed, and I know you just mentioned South Bergard, East Bergard. Those are closed schools right now, so that's the only option they have now, Singer and Maryville. Wow. So they're at capacity. Is that what you're saying? Out of the closed school. Bunch of capacity. Okay. Okay. So they never go to Singer or, or Maryville. And they go to our football team. <laughs> wow, Singer's a good school. I didn't say it wasn't. <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> But really, uh, uh, my, 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 my thoughts are always about the children, you know, and uh, Mr. Cooley and I like all of our have had a, had, a, had a talk about children uh, before. So I'm concerned about children, and I want to see the best for children, and I don't want, I, I would hate to see parents overburdened trying to find the best avenue for their child. And again, you all don't want I don't want a child left behind. We want the best for our children. Absolutely. All of us. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Jesus for commenting and looking at this. It's mandated by law, we do it. And I think the law's intentions were well aimed in that we've got schools in the state that are repeatedly in this predicament of failing schools and stuff. So I think it was a, an attempt to reach out to those parents to say, we need to give your children a choice. Do you try to remain here or can you go to another school? Now, they overlook the cost of it. The state's notorious for that. But uh, I feel comfortable living here. I don't, I feel comfortable, first of all, it's not going to happen. But if it did, I think whatever board is sitting here would actually try to work with you and uh, work with parents on that and stuff. So sometimes it may not seem like it, but we're all here in the education business. Every child out there, we can possibly do so. Okay, we're going to vote. All in favor of the policy file JCBE, uh, the final adoption in June of 2022, indicate so by saying yes. 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 No. Yes. Indicate so by saying no. <laughs> One no. Well, thank you. We'll take it. Take it. Take it. Yeah. Take it. I did. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, did you catch that, Miss Orton? I'm sorry, Miss Ed. I heard the yeah. 10B, <laughs> motion to approve revision of policy file CBG, administrative and supervisory positions, and waiver the waiting period. CGB. Make that correction on the agenda. I probably did that. I'm sort of dyslexic. So Mr. Gary Blackman would appreciate that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> understand what we're doing here sort of clean this policy up uh, and really it was brought about by a recommendation on uh, the superintendent having a little more flexibility on the interview committee uh, with the assistant principal I think it was superintendent. Assistant, superintendent. assistant superintendent and might have cleaned up some other items any questions on it? Hearing none. All in favor of the recommendation to revise policy file. Do we need to address that on this assistant superintendent section of policy? Red stricken needs to stay in, but blue needs to stay in. Because it's only assistance. We were reading it according to the front page, but it does not need to change on this super thing. Thank you for pointing that out. So will I have to uh, make a motion to amend this policy then? You could to amend the, right. the recommendation as presented to read this state. The red uh, let's say I have five or eight. I'd like to make a motion to amend uh, this this policy recommendation uh, specifically item 5e the red was mistaken uh, the, the red was stricken mistakenly it needs to be included and, and we just need to remove the blue correct correct I'll second any questions have, or discussions I have a question um, the, the interview team who chooses that Mr. Cooper you choose that team yes well, most of it chosen by itself, but the personnel directors on it or assistant superintendents on it. We name so. one other director. Any questions on the motion to amend this? We'll vote on the amendment first. If you'd like, I, I'll read it. Just a little bit. It says the superintendent shall then recommend a person for the position 
to the school board taking into consideration the education profile of each applicant, the interview procedure, as well as other qualifications, and the school board shall act on the recommendation, make the recommendation to the board, and the board shall act on the recommendation. We'll remain the same word. Yeah. Superintendent provides the board with a list of qualified applicants to be interviewed by the board. The board then makes a recommendation to the superintendent. Not a recommendation. The board actually hires the super assistant superintendent. The old policy said the superintendent shall then recommend a person for the position to the school board take consideration the educational profile of each applicant, the interview procedure, as well as all other qualifications, and the school board shall act on the recommendation. That wasn't right either. That's the old policy. Yeah, it repeats twice. Well, not much on tabling, but I'm on. Maybe, on Maybe we should table this recommendation until we have a chance to get some clarification on exactly what is the correct policy. That was in your old policy. That I read. Okay. But here's an example of us not following our own policy and what things are going to sort of way. So we need to bring it back up and adjust it. Is there a motion to table this? But you got a concern. Well, it almost. Do we even need E? Sorry. No. E? That whole section? We Can we just strike that whole section? I think that's part of what they're talking about. Are there it all kinds of interview for an administrative position possible? Yeah. That's but what as I'm far as the D and E, yeah, I'm not really. Where it's on D, if it said we're an administrative position, if that was for assistant superintendent? It's under the assistant superintendent. Okay. So with E, I'm not really. Because yeah. we've already, by that point, we've already interviewed and then we score. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's directly coming from the board at that point. Yeah. Kind of like with the superintendent, pretty much the same thing. You might be saying go into an open meeting and announce the board's decision. We have to vote in open meeting, though. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So we can't just you can't vote. Well, now we're well, that mean, it, yeah. right, it's well, illegal I'm for clarity. <laughs> Maybe we just strike E. So I think you just strike E. Strike E. Strike E. I withdraw my motion, Mr. Green. But wait a minute. First of all, withdraw. Since we started chasing this rabbit, uh, <laughs> we either need to vote on the amendment, or you can withdraw your. Amendment and whoever second it concur. I'd like to withdraw my okay. and I concur. All right, so we're back to do we want to strike in? I'll make a motion. Yes, I make a motion to strike. Oh, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Second by Mr. Bowman. Any discussion on that? Does that capture what we're trying yeah. to do? Thank you, Justin. I was going to ask Ms. Crane, do you have any objections to that or do you see a problem with that? Well, on the assistant superintendent, the board is the interview team. That's correct. You, the board members, are the interview team. That's correct. That's addressed in the first. Right. Right. That's what we're saying. So we got, well, that's it. Yeah, that's already in there. And then he comes back and says that he that recommends to us. A, a is. I think this is captured if you're comfortable with it here. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. I think by removing E, it captures it. Yes, because. 
And I think some of the confusion was some of the same wording was being carried over from from director positions and well with the super with the assistant superintendent you are the interview team exactly. with all the other administrative positions that are mentioned in this policy principal assistant principal director supervisor the interview teams are outlined in this policy on the front where it was stricken make a recommendation to the board and the board shall act on the recommendation that was stricken due to act one I think what he's saying can they remove the can I let me yes. I think what happened was this this old policy was in a terrible format and when I went to drag E it I believe it needs to be 4C because mm -hmm. <coughs> the, that the superintendent shall then inform the board of the interviews team recommended of his selection that is for the first four categories all those are in that first paragraph okay that's so that's all in the first par uh, third paragraph right so i, I think par that's fourth paragraph that's so e does not apply to the assistant superintendent correct so i think it's mr Pedrini, so yes. that, i think that's what happened i won't go into the nightmare that this was in and i, I apologize for it we have reformatted this. I've asked Ms. Archer to look at it and clean it up and, and emailed back and forth and that got put in the spot and I didn't catch it when I proofread it today. My bad. The main thing is are we comfortable with, <laughs> with removing heat? All right. All in favor of the amendment to strike paragraph 5E Indicate so by saying yes. 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 Any opposed indicate so by saying no. It's stricken. Now we're ready to vote on the revised policy. All in favor? Indicate so by saying yes. Yes. Any opposed indicate so by saying no. Here recommendations from the insurance committee. It is a recommendation to issue a request for qualifications with RFQs to be submitted no later than June 21st, 2022, before 10 a.m. First of all, I want to thank Mr. Jones uh, for taking the lead on this and your committee for the work you've done on it. Uh, may not be perfect, but it's an excellent start. Any discussion on the recommendation? Hearing none, Chair will call for a vote. All in favor of the recommendation to issue a request for qualifications with RFQs to be submitted no later than June 21st, 2022, before 10 a.m. Indicate so by saying yes. 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 Saying no. Okay, we can go out with the RFQ. No. Item 12 to receive and discuss proposed redistricting plans as drawn by redistricting LLC. Uh, okay, uh, there he is. We're going to hear from Mr. Blair. Where are we then? No, you weren't there. <laughs> Y'all call me? Yes, yes sir. Come on, man. Come on down. If you will, for the audience's benefit, if you'll identify yourself yes. as position, appreciate it. Good evening, members of the board and members of the public. My name is William Blair. I was hired by the, the school board to assist in the redistricting of the school board after the 2020 census. So you could consider me to be the Beauregard demographer. When I'm not the Beauregard demographer, I'm the demographer for the state legislature. I've got 30 years of experience doing this stuff. 
I'm actually 25. Now you have a full head of hair prior to uh, 2020. So there you go. Um, so I thought what we do tonight, we have two plans to talk about. <coughs> but before that, I thought for the assistance of the public and for the members, although you've heard all this stuff from me before in our meetings, we go quickly through sort of the, the reason we're doing this. So everybody's on the same page. And then I'll talk about the issues that Beauregard had population-wise. And then we'll talk about the solution to that. So I'll go pretty quick. Stop me or raise your hand or ask a question. No problem. Uh oh. Oh, here we go. All right. See, we're almost, almost done already. What is redistricting? It's the redrawing of your political boundaries. Okay. Um, must be done after every federal decennial census um, due to a variety of Supreme Court decisions and state and federal laws. So we have to do it even if we don't want to. Who does it? Well, it depends on the jurisdiction, but school boards do it themselves. The police jury is going to do it them themselves. The legislature did it themselves. So the bodies have the responsibility to do that work. When do we do it? Well, we have to wait for the census to come out. And in case you were uh, off the internet and not listening to TV or radio or anything for the last three years, um, the census was delayed over eight months due to the uh, COVID pandemic. So we didn't get this data about, about eight months after we usually would, which kind of compressed our time period in which to do this. Further compressed due to the fact that we have qualifying for school board elections July 20th, and the Secretary of State wants their, this information to them a month ahead of time. So our drop dead day is you know, mid-June. So unfortunately, it's a little faster than any of us would like, but it's here regardless. So why are we doing it? Again, federal, state law, Supreme Court tells us what to do. The two main things we have to understand when we do this, and I'll make this very clear when, we, when I show you Beauregard's map. Population equality, meaning we try and get everyone's vote to count equally in the parish so that the districts, the 10 districts that exist, we want them to be as close in population as we can get, with some exceptions. You get some, some wiggle room on that. It's about 5% on either side due to a, a variety of reasons. That can be geography. It can be core districts. It can be Voting Rights Act. There's a bunch of reasons why you could have a little leeway within that number. But it's always going to be within this parameter of plus or minus, plus or minus 5%. And I'm going to show you that those numbers shortly and then the Voting Rights Act of 1965, which we're going to talk about too. I always include this slide in all these presentations because when you ask somebody, well, how long has this country thought that everybody's vote should count equally? And most people will give you some date back to 1787 when we, when we, when we adopted the Constitution of the United States. But no, it took a Supreme Court decision in 1962 for us to decide that everybody's vote should count equally. Baker v. Carr, that's because it's the state of Texas review, refused to redraw its congressional districts since 1901. So that's why we have this configuration of getting everybody's district as equal as we can. Voting Rights Act of 1965, meaning if you have a minority district, you should do everything you can to maintain it. If there is one you could draw, you should examine the possibility of doing so. Um, although this state, or no, in fact, no state or jurisdiction is currently under what they call Section 5 of the Voting Rights Act, which is anybody that's been here more than 10 years would understand what that meant, which is you pass a plan, you change a precinct, you do anything different with what you do politically with voting, you're sending it to the Department of Justice in Washington, D.C. for a preclearance and review and approval. That does not exist anymore after 2013. The Supreme Court tossed out Louisiana along with everyone else that was under Section 5. And I tell all my clients, including Beauregard, which you've all heard this already, you need to act as if you're still under Section 5. We, you are we are all still under Section 2, of the, Section 2 of the Voting Rights Act, which means we have to be cognizant of protecting the voting rights 
of minorities in Boulder Parish, which we have. And this is not a lecture, this is just how I talk. Um, that's section five for anybody that's really interested in knowing the, the, the details of why it's unconstitutional. State legal requirements, here's the short, sweet version of all this. And I tell all of my school boards, drawing school board districts is not about attendance zones. It's not about taxing districts. It's not about bus routes. It's about getting equal population for every district. Now, we know that really, that we go to the police jury, it's about roads. Why is my district so big? I, I have to take care of all these roads. It's because it's equal population. Doesn't make it doesn't always make sense necessarily, doesn't seem fair sometimes. But under that regimen of everybody's vote should count for everybody sitting in, 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 at this dais, that's why we do it. Um, God, my eyes are so bad these days. Uh, special timing, we've talked about that. Maintain your district set that should be five plus minus five percent deviation. Adhere tradi to traditional redistricting criteria. What does that mean? It means a variety of things under the, what the Supreme Court has told us. It can be natural geography. It can be your cores of your, of your current districts. It can be incumbent protection. Um, it can be any variety of things to justify a little bit of difference in population within that plus or minus 5%. Um, the other key factor in any plan drawing done for a school board is that the state, the state statute require limits, I should say, limits the number of precincts you can split when drawing a district. So all of our districts are supposed to have whole precincts where we can, um, but because of population differences in these precincts, geography and whatnot, sometimes we have to split them to make the numbers work. And as such, um, we are limited to three splits per district, and of those three splits, they can only be split between two districts. So. We should also say that when we're splitting these districts, they have to be on a physical visible feature, which is also a census tabulation line. What does that mean? Well, the census gives us a bunch of jigsaw pieces, okay, with population in them. And those are the limitations by which we have to work with our districts. So when something looks a little funny, you're asking, well, why is it on this road and not this road? It's usually because there's no census block there. It's not a physical feature, so we're just left with what we have. Um, Change in membership, any board can do that anytime it likes with redistricting. And are we stopping there? There we go. Um, that's the split law, 1771.3. Timelines, here we are, June 20th, drop dead date for um, submitting a plan to the Secretary of State for approval. You're, School board qualifies July 20 to 22, and your election day is November 8th, which is why we're all here today to get us moving on down the road. Census data for Beauregard, I'm gonna have to turn this way because I'm blind. Grew about 900 people. Um, racially maintained around the same black, white, et cetera balance, um, which is why there's really no section two um, review needed for board regard other than maintaining our one minority district. Let's also say that these, just because the census says this is what the numbers are, doesn't mean that's really all the people in Beauregard Parish. The census is replete with inaccuracies, with undercounts, with you know, misallocation of people in census blocks, um, which they admit to a lot of this. Um, but unfortunately, this is the data we have. We are required by law to use it. So as much as we may hate some of this and not believe it's true, it's what we have to work with and must work with under state statute. So back to your population. Here's your district, your, your parish population, your ideal district if you have 10 or 11 districts, and the plus or minus, that's 5% on either side of that number. So you, when you're drawing these districts, well, you know, we've got, you know, 36,000 people in this parish. You're still left with these really small numbers to get everything equal, right? Under 200 people on either side of that number. So it, it's, it can be difficult, it can be painful, and you can't always get everything you want when you're having to get within these sort of population boundaries. So now for the exciting stuff. 
a little small, but here is the current districts with the 2020 population. So the first thing you do is you take your current districts and we drop in 2020 population on top of it instead of 2010 population. And this is what we get. Essentially, really significant growth in 4A and 5B. So the south end of the parish is a bunch of growth, okay? The minority district 3A, a little too small. So it needs to grow, and we need to be careful that we maintain it as a minority district, which we have. And we have to take care of that excess population on the bottom of the parish. Those are the two big issues we have to deal with in Borough. Um, unless we're all taking an optometry test, you really can't read that, but it's online and available to you. Essentially, these are just the numbers you saw on that map. We haven't posted. We will post. We're going to post it after this meeting. Now. Um, here's the first attempt. Do I go too fast? Yeah. Okay. At the request of the board, I've drawn two plans. I did not go stare at the Gulf of Mexico and draw these plans by myself. I had consultation with board members that advised me as to the concepts and the ideas that made the most sense for Borgar Parish which then I took all that advice and put it into a plan that works both for population equality and the Voting Rights Act. So, um, and this is what we've come up with today. The 10 member plan, which you see on the map here, the colors are the, would be the new districts. The dark blue lines are the current district lines. So you kind of can see what's happened with the districts as they change from 2010 to 2020. And as you can see, because the southern half of the parish grew, 4A, 4B shrink down. They have to shrink down to get that population equality. And as such, other districts have to come on top of that and take that population so they can go low and take the population in the south. Now, even with that, it's not fundamentally different from the current plan. Maybe it is for 4A because it was so massively huge and 4B um, but we're not taking a district and sticking it somewhere else in this plan. We're just adjusting where necessary to get to population equality. We should also say for 3A, um, remember it was 13% under, so it had to get at least 7% of a district added to it. We were able to do that up on the boundary line with Vernon Parish and maintain 3 a as a strong minority district. I think it lost maybe three-fourths of a percent of voting age population black. That's because there was nowhere else to go to get that population. It's the best we could do. I worked very closely with Spruner to make sure that happened. Now, that's the data. Everybody's within the plus or minus five percent. The 3A is at about 55 percent black. It's at 54.3% VAP, and registration is almost 60%. Now, when you see registration statistics, take that with a bit of grain of salt, because that data is at the precinct level, and when you're having to split a precinct, you're, you have to take that with a little bit of caution. But needless to say, this, this district should perform well for Ms. Bruner or whomever comes after her. Um, so, we also have in front of you a 11 member plan. Now, what this does is it takes a district and puts it in the south eastern corner of the parish, which would become 4C, sort of soaking up that ac excess population, um, leads to not undramatic change elsewhere, um, but the western side of the parish, the districts maintain very close similarity to what they are now. Um, again, it's still going to affect the southeastern part of the parish as those districts have to um, still grow into that area. Um, and then when you look at the Ritter, you see not as much change, essentially mainly because when you add a 11th district, you're reducing the ideal size of a district by about 300 people. So some of the population deviations are not so dramatic, makes it a little less, a little more surgical in the way how you draw a district instead of uh, 
more dramatic. Although the other one isn't so bad either, um, except for maybe the slower half of the pairs. Um, there's the data. It's very similar population-wise, black-white-wise, as the 10-member plan. And then I know nobody has any questions. <laughs> so that's, so I'll be happy to take questions or run out of the building. Well, before we get to that, this item, there was uh, interest expressed by members of the public at previous meetings with we have an open meeting or can the public participate and so forth. So that's really what we are trying to do tonight. The board hadn't openly really discussed none of the things. So ideally what we'll do tonight, we've heard from Mr. Blair, we'll open it up to the audience first. Uh, sometimes their questions are answered by the presentation, sometimes they're not. So then we give you that opportunity. Then we'll ask the board they've got questions and so forth and then I think uh, in speaking with you we would probably need a special meeting and that's when we would come forth with whatever our proposals are and vote and adopt now the public's also invited to that it would be an open meeting just like any of the other meetings and so forth. but this is just a, a needed step to involve the public or give them the opportunity and first opportunity really for the board to sort of look at it, chew on it per se, and ask Mr. Blair possibilities or questions. Okay, we'll go to the audience. Uh, we had one uh, green sheet, uh, Michael Blair. Mike, if you'll step to the mic and give us your name and address. Thank you, guys. Uh, Michael Clary, 191 Beauchene Drive, the Ritter, 70634. Um, thank you again. You gave a, a good, thorough presentation last time and this time, too. Um, so are these two maps, that's the, it's either A or B, is that? So potentially, I guess you guys could change that prior to next week. Is that, is that, that's possible? Okay. Would the public get input on that as well? Yeah. At the meeting, or prior, with prior well, notice? You, you would have input. If there's some changes made, Yes, sir. they would be, at the next meeting, we are hopefully going to come forth with an agreed upon proposal. Now, there may be more than one proposal, you know what I'm saying? There may <coughs> be some that still want 10, some that still want 11, or the 11 might change, the 10 may change. Sure. Uh, at that meeting, public would be free to make comments. I don't know if the board would have the, they'll hear you that night, <clears throat> okay. but this gives the board an opportunity and gives us a little time to make sure we are addressing your concerns or try to answer them between when we actually bring it up again. To vote sure, on. so it could be one option, two options, we just don't know. Well, we're probably going to be limited in some sense, Mike. Uh, okay. Mr. Blair, he's, he's getting the antsy back there. <laughs> I'm just asking, just for information. So, we can make changes, but again, we have to make sure population's right, voting rights is right, and we have that precinct split law. So, when somebody just says, well, you know, I wish precinct two was in district two, well, that may not work with the math. Right. So we can't, you can't just do it on the fly in a meeting, Well, that's why I'm saying you wouldn't want to do it tonight. Uh, that's just for clarity, what the expectation is next week, I think is. I say next week. Or, or next week, month, whatever you want. It might be next week, but we, we got one date that would be available next week. It might be the week after that. It might be next I, month. I don't know. Yeah, we're we're going to do something for you. Um, in your presentation last, in December, the initial presentation, you you pretty well articulated that there was a population growth in the south, which we saw in the numbers, and a decline in the north. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I have this verbatim, but I wrote in my notes, this, you made the statement, whether they like it or not, the north will have to move south, mm -hmm. and the south will have to shrink. Yes. I don't 
and it, you know, obviously I'm not an expert and it's not my opinion, but from looking at, in particular, the 10 map, it seemed to be more of an east-west shift, which could have potentially exposed maybe some other rural places to no little or no less or no potential mm -hmm. representation. Was that considered? No. No. Well, I can just say I just worked with this. You can see you had you had to shrink. You had, the population had to come straight down to absorb all that excess growth in 4A and 4B, and that's just the direction it went. Mm -hmm. um, I think the idea was to keep. Well, I'm not going to speak for the membership. You can speak yeah. for yourselves on. I, I, I think I, I'd like to address. Please. That. So one of the issues that we do face in the river is because of the concentration of population in the river. There's only so many ways that you can that you can cut the, the number of people because it has to be each district has to have an equal number sure. within plus or minus five percent. So so that was one of the the issues that I had with, with the ten member plan is that it, I didn't feel like that it, it adequately represented the growth in the south end of the parish because of what you stated. It, it just seemed like that these like my district uh, over there on the east side had to drop down. Miss uh, Miss Martha's district in the blue for Singer went all the way almost to Highway 171, uh, and you know so so I understand what you're saying, but that was that's where we continually ran into the problem is is the population density in Ritter and us only having so many people to work with per district. It, sure, you only can cut that up so many ways. Absolutely. Just curious because it was just an anticipation of that statement that stuck out to me, and then. To see the map, it didn't necessarily represent that. Had to be a reason. Just curious why. Um, talking to some of the legislators, and I know you're dealing a lot with those guys, the term community of likeness was brought to my attention, and uh, I've never heard of it before. And so I kind of asked some questions about what that could mean, and in a rural district, a rural parish like we have, one of the community like this is the school mm -hmm. and so to watch some of that spill over into other districts did we did, does that represent the 10 map I'm, I'm just looking at the 11 map so it does it represent that in particular um, I'm mostly concerned with population okay. that's right as we said the tenant zones here are not irrelevant because they're relevant to every member here but we can't draw districts based on attendance zones or, you know, which schools feed where. Right. We have to get to the map. That's the sure. And that's and my appreciation is my work with them. They take that into account. And what it did appear that the eleventh district may have addressed that. When I looked at it, it it could have. And thank you for answering my questions. Huh? I'm sorry. I'm not. Uh, you're the guy with the with the, with the here. information but um, it did appear that it protected some of the more rural areas while still addressing the growth in the south and protecting the river um, do you feel I, can you give an opinion is it again I I my job is to provide guidance to the board mm -hmm. for a legal plan I am agnostic on 10 or 11 <laughs> I don't live here yeah, I don't right. live here you guys have to figure out which which works best for your parents. We thought you me. might move here after this experience. I mean, I need to figure out which district you live in. Like, you, know. um, <clears throat> you guys have probably looked at it. I, man, I'd love to hear your opinions on it if you if you have any. I mean, you, you guys have looked at it more than just five minutes trying to squint across the screen to figure it out. So there's, there's um, So I'll say this. So. I started working with Mr. Blair on the 11 member plan for that very reason. I was really concerned, uh, specifically on the western side of the parish, that um, there was a potential for the communities in Maryville and the communities in Singer to potentially lose uh, their voice uh, on the board. It wouldn't be a stretch uh, with the, the Singer district, especially running all the way up to 171, the Maryville district running well into the Ritter. Could very well potentially be that Good. someone who is not involved in those communities who live outside of those communities who live closer to the or closer to Ragley could mm -hmm. by and large be um, recruited 
and win that vote, and so therefore they lose their community representation. Um, where I'm at on the eastern side of the parish, where Ms. Weldon's at on the eastern side of the parish, ours doesn't really change that much, so it, it didn't affect us, in my opinion, all that much. So when I started working with Mr. Blair on the 11-member plan, that was my intention, because I wanted to make sure, uh, it was my hope, that we could preserve the voice of, uh, you know, that the people from within the communities of Maryville, from within the communities of Singer, could have, have their voice on the board. Because, like you said, with the community of likeness, even though we have to draw these according to population, by and large, we, we, we pretty much align with our community of likeness being our schools. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, every every person on this board would say, well, yeah, I represent the whole parish, but I, I represent East Fulbright, I represent South Fulbright, I represent Ritter, you know, and so, um, so that was, um, and, and, and that was my goal when I started working with Mr. Blair on the 11 member plan, was trying to address that. Okay. That's, do you have any other questions? Do I? Yes, Yeah, because we're going to move into board. Oh, I got you. Okay. I didn't, well, I didn't mean to interrupt that. I've asked this one before. I just can't pass up the opportunity to ask it again. No matter which map you go with, A, B, whatever, you guys, I think you were, I, I, you were not for this, but do you see it affecting the attendant zones at all? Where if somebody lives one address, that address could go to a different school because of this. Is that a possibility? I don't see we're not. It's, well, I can only speak for myself. It's not my intention to go there. Now, I disagree with Mr. Blair a little bit. He says, on one hand, it's all about population. Well, when you're doing a district, how do you not sort of look at, per se, school zones, yes, but go back to the population in that school zone? The school zone shouldn't sit and set it, per se. But what, what's the standard you start from? <coughs> you know, so there's a little bit of, and maybe we're saying the same thing, Dr. Blair, but. Uh, Population has to be number but, one. Schools can be one, one A, right? Yeah. That's, okay. uh, but back to your question, I, I'll answer it the same way the night you, I hope I am, the same way you asked. Uh, to my knowledge, it's not the board's intention to look at attendance on Okay. Well, I wasn't. I appreciated you putting the the ch where the changes were in different colors. It surprised me how much adding that 11th district didn't change the rest. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize that that would. Well, so that was that was that was great. That's all I have. Thank you guys again for letting me. And okay. I'm sure I'll see you next time. That was all the green cards. That's it. Just one green card on that die. So I would say. You know, I've worked with Mr. Green, Dr. Blair. We in here as a board, probably unanimously throughout the years, as this has been blooming, have pretty much all said, we don't want to look like the police. <laughs> okay? Now, I think, I think everyone in here has echoed that. And the 10 member plan does go that direction. And I'm one of the people in the parish that my police juryman, even though I live right next to South Borgard, um, not unhappy with my police juryman, but he does live in Greer. And as as we start going that direction, that same thing is going to happen to our school system. Right? Um, if we can keep that school alignment, it's, it's certainly a big plus. Um, I like the word community of likeness. Mike brought that up. Um, another legislator leg told me the same thing. Well, I'll, I'll see why we can. It's also sort of school song. You what? Community likeness is very similar to the school song. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I think you have, in District 1, you have a prison population that's in there that is about 700 people strong. We didn't think that there was that many people at the beginning. It turns out it's about 700 people that probably don't even vote very much. And they're there in that Singer district. Probably not voting to represent that area. It just makes the presence that's over there near the Ragley area even stronger 
with the possibility of even having someone who aligns with South Beauregard more so representing seniors. And that, that is a very real concern. Um, the other thing is when we do go to 11, pretty much the only person who has to pick up new electorate is whoever is representing my district, District 4B, whether it's me or the next person. I think everybody else either shrinks or stays the same. So there will be a lot less movement, even though we are creating an extra district. Um, certainly a whole lot less movement in Ritter as well. So board members who have been on here for a while, you can still represent the same people that have elected you for all these years. I think that's very important as well. Um, not miss out on that. Okay. I'll make a couple of comments based on, and look, this is the first I'm, I'm looking at it and first in the discussion. So I'm not saying I'm for 10, I'm for 11, 20, or no, 15. But, <laughs> But, but some of the comments, and, and I, I just want to be careful to make sure we, we keep our objective and stay focused, was we don't want it to look like the police juries. Well, Ray, your district is getting pretty close with an 11-member plan. You're up into the river. Yeah. So, right. so let me just, let me differentiate that. You go, 10-member plan has four to five people doing that. The 11-member plan has one. Has what? One person, my district just address be the only district that has to pick up new and it would go up into the river some and is there growth in in the south area yes Absolutely. Uh, now Garrett I think maybe your geography is, is a little backwards uh, the the big threat if we do it according to where people live is the east area I played with the numbers of people. You can pull up each precinct and the population in each precinct. And then you look at school zones and you're saying, okay, Singer is really a precinct 9, 10, and 1, let's say. What's the population in those? It's around 3,300 uh, and 33. So Singer would pretty much make it. They, they would need 115 if you go to 10. Maryville is really about the same area, but it's always sort of been a token they're coming in on, on the river and stuff. South, if you look at their school zone, if you're looking at 10, it's about 2.4 board members. 8,802 is the population. So 2.4, you, you deserve two and four tenths of a board member, because we all have to share some, you know, on this. We can't just go cut that tie and say, here's your three sizes, here's your four slices, and so forth. You get to the rhythm, and you look at the school zones, and best I can tell you, it's around 16,575 people. Well, that's five. If you look at 4.7 or 4.6, if you look at a 10 member, and it's 4.988 if you're looking at an 11 member. So if we account for the concentration of population, you're going to award South Borgard, but you're going to penalize the rhythm. Because all of these other districts, you're just coming into the rhythm. If we go move over east and we look at east and what their school zone for, it's 1.2 under a 10 member plan and 1.4 under a six member plan. I mean, 11 member plan. So basically, if you're going with 11 members, we might ought to look at the eastern side of the river there, those precincts there, and that's maybe where the fifth, uh, maybe a fifth member there, but then east and south, the northern part of the south and, the, and east, you have to start sharing one like on a six tenths south and a four-tenths east, if I make it, I mean. So, so because south grew by 20%, 20%, 20%, 
don't know what percentage. It's not 100 in the whole parish. 18% to 22%. So because we grew 20%, we would lose representation? That doesn't sound like that. I don't, I'm not following. Well, if you look at the, the figure of a 10 member plan yeah, right under there. the old way, 4A and 4B had how many residents in it? 8,802. And 4A and 4B at that time was pretty much capturing all of South Borgard's school zone. And, and also so if you told precincts, to, you know, if you squared that off. So you go down in percentage and gain representation in the river? I'm, I'm not following you. Those, well, those maps show a decline. You didn't get you didn't gain population in the river. I know. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. It's just that they wasn't properly represented to start with properly. He's referring to And this. if we're gonna to try to correct this based on where the population is currently, we'd correct south, but we wouldn't correct the other. He's referring to the encroachment of outside members into the river. I mean, I'm just yeah, responding to some of the comments that have come in here on in that regard. I'm still confused. Okay. I'm going to down on negative I, I had all my numbers written down, and with all this, I didn't bring You got negative points. Down. You got negative 6%, you got negative 14%, negative 7% growth in the river, and then you got 0.1. And, and, and this is a bush area, which is fuzzy map. So here, here's the other thing. When you say to Ritter, what are you thinking of? City limits. But there's almost as many people <laughs> really being blue and white. Grayville, Granbury, places like this, that is, let's say, to Ritter. Just like when you think of South Borgard, you don't think of just Ragley, like the overpass, or just where the school is at. Anyway, that's that's why we're we're having these discussions and, and uh, looking at it. And is there any way to do population by attendance zone? That's pretty much what I, I thought I tried to do. But now some of these attendance zones. I meant. Uh, I oh yeah, I don't. And I believe your numbers. That's not what I'm saying. Well, hey, look, I'm not gonna. Uh, Stand up in court because my first weekend. Uh, not to offend anybody, but I'll use SD sales former saying it, it's a swag. Scientific while so and so game <laughs> uh, to get those figures. Because when you get at where is attendance zones, they're really it's a fine line there and on the maps I had, some of it some of it we're sharing already. Maryville in Precinct 7, it really has both. Some of it, the attendance zone is in Maryville School, some of it's in the Sarilla School. Right. So probably some of that also at the top up there in 18 with East uh, and, and so forth. So, so you said that you felt as though the Jewitter was underrepresented based on its population. So what you're saying is that we should have had more school board members around the Ritter area and less on the outer, like east, you know, I think the last population was held from my district was like 3,600 people. I think Garrett's was 34, 35, and that we should have been only one Whereas Ritter should have gained one to two more. Well, we need to look at it and, and, and then see the same it. with Maryville and Singer. If you looked at the precincts, what is East? Which precincts go with East? Oh, oh precincts, guys? Um, let's see, 17, 17, 18, no, no. 19, 19, C, and 20. Okay, I can't read that here. Maybe I can't read your hand. 
and then also going to share so 22 21 20 19c 19 uh, and say 17a because that attendance zone runs just about at the end of 18 down to sort of perpendicular to the uh, South Mennonite Road if you're looking at it in that sense. Okay, so currently 18, 17, 16, and 15, no, 18, 17, and I can't see for the glare, but there's 16 are accounted for somewhere else. And if you looked at the populations of those three, that's about 2,690 some odd people. What do you mean it's not for somewhere else? Well, they're in the east. You're saying that they're Rivers represented by right. East Bogart reps, but they attend River School, is that what you're saying? No. Nope. I think he's trying to say like like District 1 was coming into Ragley, that one that the blue part that Martha's got right there yeah. that's taken from me. He's saying the Ritter has some going into the Ritter from the, the slip, the flip of that. That's right, it's the flip, flip of that. that. Yeah, right. He's saying, Denver, I guess, Denver, it's not Denver. fair there. How's it fair up there mm -hmm. that that person's representing there? Mm -hmm. Apparently, it's just, just the opposite here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why bring a population of 16,000 in the Ritter earlier? What do you mean by bring it up early? Well, you brought up that Twitter was underrepresented and it had a, a large population and made it almost that you guys in Twitter are outpopulated the rest of the parish, so you guys should have extra members, and that's why it was underrepresented. Well, when it was done 10 years ago, uh, it should have been brought up then. It wasn't. And a 10-member plan really doesn't change a whole lot here uh, on, on that plan there, but if we're going to correct it based on population, why wouldn't we look at that? Because it underrepresents the little schools. Because basically, if we were to do that, so how many board members are you saying that Toretta should have as opposed to Maryville and Singer East and Garrett area South and East. Well, if you're talking about underrepresented, well, be down to one you number. got, uh, well, okay. So you cut the river down to four, you cut it down to three. Isn't that upper underrepresented for those people in those? I would never say to cut the members that you guys already have, but it made it sound like you meant that we should be cutting the members on the outside and adding more members to the I don't say area. cut anyway. Yeah. I'm just saying if you do it by population and you're going with a 10 member plan based upon the population distribution where they reside, south is due more than two. They're like 2.4. Do it on 11 member plan it's like 2.6 or 2.7 not enough for a third member so they're going to share in other words with somebody else singer is right at one maryville's a little under one the only where place maryville can go is in the director to share there okay if you look at the Ritter, it shows either 4.6 or 4.9, depending on which one you're looking at. Uh, and if you're looking at east, it shows 1.2 or 1.4, if you're looking at attendance in, in the school zones. So it would make sense that south to pick up their six tenths or four tenths needs to share with east. The east has to share with somebody to pick up six tenths or eight tenths. East also is going to share some, a small fraction of the share of some in the north part of the Derrida song. But your premise started off with Derrida shouldn't be sharing. And now you're saying that Derrida should, should not be sharing. 
But now, I don't know if I said that. Yeah, that's pretty, pretty much what you said. Um, also, uh, if you like sharing, I guess a 10 member map is the way to go. If, if we're also going off attendance of why, why would we be going off well, What standard of, do you use to see that the population is, is rep fairly represented? The, you got the, a different, the you got a different, well the census data is based, okay, you got census data for 36,549 people. Okay, so if we went off of attendance and say Dritter gets a brand new school, so wouldn't the attendance go up at that point? I mean, wouldn't that be the, the overall objective is for their attendance to go up? Not necessarily. So therefore, therefore wouldn't that This that is point? based off of the, the population in those areas in year 2020. In the year 2020. I'm saying future-wise. Oh, okay. If we're, if we're I don't think we're, we're thinking future-wise. So based off of attendance. Dr. Blair, quick question. Out of the blue. When was the the last time that someone could submit their data into the census, like, was it December 31st, 2020? Is that probably the deadline? Deadline to? For a family to register for the census. Oh, I mean, they cut off the, census day was April 1st, 2020. They ended the census in like September of 2020. And then they, to roll up the data, and that's why one of the many reasons it was delayed as long as it was. But so we're talking about being underrepresented. We're talking about growth and south. The deadline occurred when we had a hurricane, and no one in the southern part of the parish had electricity for five or six weeks. Probably weren't even. So you know, we're talking about being underrepresented. We're talking about the future. We're probably talking about not even being active right now. Mr. Blair is accurate with the data that he has. But I suspect we didn't even capture all that. You're kind of inferring that there's more people in Dritter than was in the census. I, I know there's more people in South than <coughs> was in the census, because they weren't even there in the hurt. They're too busy cutting up trees and picking up limbs and stuff like that. I am not inferring that there's more people in Dritter than reported on the census. The figures I gave you is what was reported on the census. And that's what we have to use, whether we like it or not. I don't think anyone ends up using the numbers, though. Okay, what is the plan moving for? So we're thinking we're gonna meet next week. Well, and that's one reason why I put it as an action, action item. We can call the special meeting tonight so that people in the audience are aware of it as well as the board. Uh, if you're looking at next week, there's graduations just about every night, so it would probably be the week after next. Uh, I don't have a calendar in front of me. 23rd through 27th. I want to shoot for the Tuesday of that week. I, I wouldn't be opposed to getting it done tonight. Pardon? I said I would not be opposed to dealing with it tonight, if that's an option. I don't think we should do that. I think it'd be important for us to, the public hasn't been shown two maps. So I think it'd be important, I think it would be a good opportunity for us to, to put the maps out there for the public, not only tonight in this meeting to see, but also um, for, for them to think on, look at, explore, research, you know, like we've had the opportunity to, and then they can contact us with any changes. Um, I, I do, I, I feel like that, that would, that's the way that we should link this, is to give the public opportunity to, to take a closer look at these maps. How long do they have to be out for the public? Is there a set, you know, set time? I'm not even <coughs> sure you have to have a public meeting. We did it because of there was a lot of interest, you know, in the public. And we will get the maps on the website in the bar, but we are not going to publish them before they <coughs> are. Okay. We will put the maps on the website tomorrow, but we were 
I'm not going to publish them before the board. And the maps that will go up on the website are they're PDFs, but they're three by four foot, which have like all the many of the roads. So when people look at those maps, they're really going to be able to see what the boundaries are, as opposed to something like this where it's just colors and some lines. Can the green card ask a quick question? <laughs> Will the current map be put on there as well? Because you cannot find that sucker anywhere. Sure. Unless you walk in here. I'll have to, cre I'll have to create it, but yeah, I can do it. Okay. It's not I can turn it on. It's on the parish, the tax it's assessor. It's our twin by the district. Can it just be put on the parish website so everybody can see it as they compare it to these? Okay, what is Tuesday? Thank you. Yes, what sir. is Tuesday? 24. May 24th. Okay. I'm, leaving, I'm leaving on to go on vacation. Monday? What's Monday? 23rd. For that, hopefully we get a form. Six o'clock. Monday, May 23rd. Is that good for you? Yes, sir. Very good. I'm, I'm confirming that, but yes. <laughs> okay. Item 13. To discuss the archiving of board meeting recordings. One more thing. That will be meeting, right? Six o'clock. Okay. Five a.m. Five a.m. This will be the only one here. I was asked to place this uh, on the agenda by a constituent. Uh, is he here? There's nobody to address him. Suggest move up on. Item 14. It's on the agenda. I'd be happy. I've been trying to. I would like to. First, I would like to clarify something. When we voted it as a board to put it on the online, and the IT department and the superintendent did a great job of actually putting it on, on YouTube, which allowed for better access than what we even voted on, um, I noticed that our committee meetings are not being streamed. Um, I don't think that that was ever the intention of the board. Now, you all can correct me, um, but I don't think that was the intention. I assume that our committee meetings would be streamed as well. How many people are you in? An average of seven up until this set. That's a lot of expense for seven people. I thought it was $0. Somebody was up here setting this up a while ago. Somebody got to pay. Just very mentioned, you got 23 tonight. 23 tonight. About as many as in here. No. I mean, you know, no more. What was the expense again? I thought it was zero. The expense is whoever's doing the way of their camera. But we could leave the cameras up instead of taking them down every time, and I can hit them. Turn on, turn off. One of the one of the issues that I I mean, you know, so I, what last month I think I missed the, the, the Thursday night meeting because I was out of town um, with limited service. So the next morning I tried to pull it up just to watch see if it reads lovely face. And, uh, I that's why that's why it's not off. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I and I couldn't. And so you know. Like and, and so in that moment I was I was genuinely trying to to catch up on what I missed and, and so it, so we have a, have a tool but I don't feel like it's being utilized fully. Um, I know I know that there's a lot of um, school board uh, school personnel who are teachers who are administrators who like you know they have a graduation they have a baseball game and they may want to they want to check it out and so if they aren't online in between six and seven seven thirty on Thursday night they can't see it and so I feel like that that's I'm not asking know that we need to archive them for 10 years but I mean, I mean man, three or four days probably wouldn't hurt you know um, just from a practical thing. I had the same experience when I tried to pull up a committee meeting as well that I had missed and I couldn't get through the whole thing I 
Pam always has recordings of every meeting. You wish to listen to them. Is there an expense that we can find out? How much it be for archiving um, for a certain amount of time? I'm not sure there's an expense on archiving. The expense that we incur was putting this together. And this is done, this taken down and put up each time? Yes, because the batteries have to be charged. Anybody doing this? Who else is doing this? How could she brought up uh, the and so forth? Uh, Calcasieu was not archived. They were just like they, they, they pretty well stopped the stream. Well, then uh, I was going to get to that. They, I don't know anybody doing it now. The three or four that were doing it, I think, due to lack of interest, not so much expense, just stopped doing it. Uh, but that's how we, I think, archiving was not included originally. It was, first step was research it from a legal standpoint. Second step was what are others doing? Can we do that? And that's where we're at now. I know I had a conversation with somebody today, and they, they were just sharing their experience of coming to the board member board meeting. And you know, what happens in here oftentimes appears a lot different out in the public. And this is one way that we can not have a disconnect other than all the discussions and all the things that are considered here here in the board can be viewed by the public. I mean, it, it, more information is always a good thing, I think. Um, so with that, I'll make a motion that uh, we reaffirm that we do um, stream committee meetings, committee, regular committee members, uh, meetings, excuse me, and also archive both committee meetings, special meetings, and board meetings. Are you going to put a time? I don't think I don't think it's really necessary to. Um, as we mentioned, it doesn't really cost anymore. So, so. I would, you know what? I noticed our minutes actually come off the website after a year. So I don't know if that would be the right. Uh, they're they're always available. Go to the policy manual. They're in the policy manual. Uh, so maybe just a clarification. I think what you're saying is stream all meetings. Yes. Not just include committee meetings. Special meeting that we would have, or whatever. All meetings and archive. Yes. Second. Second by Mr. Manuel. Moved by Mr. Goldman. Any discussion? Public discussion on it. Hearing none. All in favor? Uh, streaming all meetings, open meetings, and archiving. Indicate so by saying yes. 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 All opposed indicate so by saying no. No. <coughs> okay. Item 14. <laughs> <laughs> 
already to discuss the Boulevard Parish organization. Uh, I presented you with two uh, charts there the last time. So go ahead, Mr. Vidrin. benefit of the gentleman who filled out a, a green card uh, what we're doing on this item was the due to a uh, forthcoming retirement of the assistant superintendent uh, Mr. Cooley and, and officially letting the board know uh, was asked and, and I'm one of the ones that asked him I don't know if others did that what's your plan do you what, what we're doing we, we've got some it's not getting us all the results we want so what, you know do you want to continue with filling the position do you want to look at moving some people around or changing some descriptions or, or whatever uh, just I think you owe the board some idea in words of, of where we're going and how you'd like to proceed through this he looked at it uh, I think he thought outside the box in some cases to say what we do what do we change what do we not change uh, hopefully keeping in mind what would be the most effective positions or positions out there he came forth with two charts one of the charts uh, was basically what you're doing now I think correct uh, where you have an assistant superintendent and they're over certain people and stuff uh, he also came up with a chart of possibly not filling that position at this time and cre creating what's it, a director of auxiliary service I'm assuming this person would be mainly responsible for uh, bond projects, for maintenance projects, for disaster uh, recovery stuff. Uh, that's a job in and itself. I'm not sure one person can do it, you know, at that. Uh, and let that sort of take the role of an assistant superintendent position at this time. Now, he did not propose doing away with the assistant superintendent position. That's one of the, I think, inaccuracies that's out there in the public and stuff. The assistant superintendent position is still there. And really, he doesn't, it's not a new, new position, so if that's his choosing, he wouldn't have to come to the board to say that. He would just tell us we're going to advertise for him. If, if the board wants this new position, then that ha does take board approval because it has to be approved to create that position. So, uh, I think he threw it out there, asked us to look at it. There was some discussion that night, uh, some concerns about, you know, one of the concerns you always hear is, and, and I'm Baptist, so I talk about Baptist churches, is we've never done like that before. <laughs> uh, so, that was a concern. This is a big change. The other concerns was, I think Ms. Jackson accurately pointed it out, in one way it's putting more burden on Mr. Cooley. You know, and, and he would have to be very diligent in delegating to these directors. And also not just delegating, but holding them accountable if, if the work's not getting done and so forth. So, it could be looked at as a little bigger burden for him. You can look at it another way. Is is that the best way to go? Go as far as trying to get us up to speed on some of this stuff. Uh, you know. And so anyway, that was uh, the discussion. I mean, I captured all of it. Ray's frowning. Maybe there was something. No, I was I was recollecting like Mr. Cooley specifically said that he was asked for this. Right. And I'm the one that asked him because I wanted, 
I didn't say this plan or any plan, but I wanted a plan on where you're going. What do you want? So my only concern with your statement is there was no assistant superintendent on that chart or that paper, but you're saying there is assistant superintendent. Where is it? There's the availability of it. It's not on that chart. No, it's not on the chart. That's right. It's not on that chart. <laughs> if we go on that chart, what they mean, we're... Ray, is that they're not going to advertise and fill the position, but because the position is already in place, at Mr. Cooley's discretion, he can decide, I want to advertise and hire an assistant. And, and if you look at this chart, which doesn't have the assistant superintendent, right. the position is still there. Where? In our in our policy and in our uh, guidelines, it's just not written down, but but it is in place. He is not removing the position. Well, that's what they talked about a month ago. Which, and then, I don't know that it's going anywhere. But if, if we do go with a director of auxiliary no, services, it was specifically said we would not have to hire an assistant superintendent. We would not have to worry about having someone being certified. Who said that? We just, I, I discussed that. was said. In this I meeting. discussed that at length. Yes. Why would we not want someone with certification? It didn't say you well, I think anybody that. with certification. I just said you could op open op opportunities for all. Okay? Right. So that's, I'm perfectly fine with that. If the, if the job of assistant superintendent is felt that important, we need to make sure it's included. If it's not, then it is always an option because we're not just throwing it out. Well, I just don't that person would have to be. I don't want people to get mixed up in allegiances to superintendents, assistant superintendent, all that stuff right now, and start putting faces on here. We just need to be looking at the structure of our organization. That's what we're looking at. Right. And I think that. That is not exactly occurring. I don't understand why we would get rid of a position. We're not getting rid of a position. It's not on the map. You would have to add the assistant superintendent to this map if we're going to go with these directors. Okay. And so for the record, I am in favor of possibly hiring someone, a consultant or something, somebody like that, to do all these new construction jobs that <coughs> Marlon has been doing. I don't think that that should be an education person. But that doesn't mean that we have to get rid of assistant superintendents. So we can utilize that right? and then get it get someone who's better certified and better educated on construction. So so if, if I'm looking at this um, so the one that's missing the, the superintendent position, right now uh, there's a director of auxiliary services Whereas the other one, it was just to be a support. Uh, a supervisor. Supervisor, excuse me. Uh, also a director of curriculum. Spreading the duties. Do, do you have Mr. Cooley? If you don't, we probably need to rectify that. But do you have the, the ability to assign different specifications to the assistant superintendents? So, for example, yes. okay. So you know and you feel that you have that authority. Yes. Okay. We've had a direct. We've had people who have been over curriculum, and we've had people who have been over construction. Okay. Maintenance, for lack of a better way of saying it. So I'm kind of, I'm just kind of, kind of confused as to what we're actually discussing here, because on the one hand, uh, I'm seeing uh, no assistant superintendent. The director of auxiliary services and the other one I'm seeing the assistant superintendent and the supervisor of the auxiliary services. So are we actually creating a new position? We would be creating you could be. You could be. You would be adding a director of auxiliary services. Right now you just have a supervisor that is a possibility. You would be having a director of curriculum which is not on the other chart. But we have had a director of curriculum in the past. Is it, would it be, for clarity, 
would it be possible to have an organizational chart drawn with the assistant superintendent on it? So maybe where we feel more comfortable doing this. Because I don't feel comfortable with the position of it. There's one paper? That's the current one. That's the current one. That's the current one. He doesn't have the director. He doesn't have the director. Right. 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 Just have a supervisor of all zero instead of a director. So right. Right. Yeah, the director. Two directors positions instead of an all zero. I wasn't here at that meeting. Right. Yeah. And also, I was, yeah, I was yeah. also credited with asking for this, and I, I just want to clarify I did not ask for this. What I asked for was what we got in this. I asked two different meetings for who are the directors, who are the supervisors, because people didn't know who their supervisors were out in the field, and I asked for this twice and didn't get it. You, and then you this, asked this last month. This come in last month. I was asking two different months for it. And this come out, I believe the same time, same meeting as these two come out. And then people run up in arms thinking but that this is what I asked for. No. When the paper stated that somebody asked for it, I believe it was just assumed that it was me. It wasn't me. This is what I asked for. <laughs> to find out who. I knew the curriculum director had left, and people didn't know who that was. You know, I, I don't know why we didn't replace that. Maybe there was anticipation of doing away with something else. You know, and if Ms. Jack Jackson said that, you know, who was, It'd be a lot who was going to, all these people would have to answer the superintendent. Ultimately, the only person this board hires is a superintendent. Whether it's a director or an assistant superintendent or a supervisor of all services, he is the only person they have to answer to. They don't answer to this board. Him and an assistant superintendent is the only two that have to answer, and they got to go through him. So the assistant has to go through him. Those are the only two people that this board hires or can hold accountable for anything. Just like with a situation that happened down at South, they, they call for heads on different people up here. You can't do nothing about that. That's right. The man sitting in that chair is the one that can do it. It's just the way the law is written. I promise you. I've, been, I've researched it, thinking maybe we can change some of it. I, I get it. At the end of the day, I mean, we can say you can eliminate a position. I've been told that by Bob Hammonds 10 years ago, especially when this Act 1 and Act 2 come out. You can defund a position and do away with a position. To say we're not going to pay because that's the other thing we do is approve a budget. You cut it out of the budget and say we're not going to fund the assistant superintendent no more. Good luck, you know. But at the end of the day, I just want to know that this is what I was looking for. I wasn't in on this, or anybody was. If Mr. Cooley decides he don't want assistant superintendent, and he, we're going to vote on it, I guess we will. Well, when I, when we came to that that item. The Rolodex on a piece of paper for everybody. Uh, you, you were talking about it. Mr. Green was talking about it just before, and I thought that's what that item was. And then all of a sudden we get the chart. It's a, uh, you know, I think about what you're just saying. How many times has even people in the audience have called us? All every one of us board members got at least one of those calls. Actually, we've probably gotten a whole bunch asking us to do things that we can't do. We really have no authority to do. Ninety-nine percent of it, right? Why, why in the world would we give up tiny little personnel influence that we have from the public and just do away with it? That doesn't make any sense. I, I don't like that. I, I just echo something. Assistant superintendent for those type of deals, you know, that is Mr. Cooley's decision. Uh, it's, it's real critical who he puts in these, put, in these places. I know in the past we have not had what was Ron Abel? Was he an assistant superintendent? Was you an assistant superintendent? Yes, I was. But they changed your duties as that. Correct. You had you you had maintenance. Was Zach Warren? No, sir. Who was it at that time? Ms. Cunningham came in and took over. She did it for a while and did great. So that job has actually changed depending on who you put who we put in that job. Play to their strength. Yeah. Play to their strength. Right. It's kind of interesting that we hire someone. And then we figure out what we want that person to do instead of hiring an assistant for these responsibilities. If you and do hiring that, the person really who that is their working. strength. Sir? You're going to limit who applies if you do that. If you say, I want just this specific thing, then you're limiting where you go. Oh, you're talking about the job. Right, right. I, I would hope we don't want to do that. But that's what we've done in the past. No. 
Yeah. Well, we've had we've had some that were mainly strong, but <coughs> they weren't curriculum but strong. Who decided that? The superintendent did after they were hired. I guess in the, in the job right. application, it wasn't decided there. It was we don't write it out and say we were right. looking for a curriculum person. That's the job of every of every leader is to determine right. whether whether the streets of your employees are put in place appropriately. Code to place where it is exactly. So I, you know, I, one thing I just just not so in this this model with these directors, I, I it looks a lot cleaner, a lot more streamlined um, with some of these director positions. So are we saying that there would not be an assistant superintendent no, on yeah. this? If we want to add an assistant superintendent with those directors, then we're going to move director curriculum over here under assistant superintendent on the old form. If we want to maintain all those positions. Do you want a director of auxiliary services? Do you want a supervisor? Because I just I've, I've, I've kind of felt like that we're having three different conversations about all of this, you know, from from certain certain angles, certain certain things that are being said and being voiced. I, so I'm just trying to figure out actually what we're what we're actually talking about. Basically, you can narrow it down to, to one decision. And, and not, does the board want to create a director of auxiliary services. And we don't also be creating a director of special education and director of curriculum. No, we already have that. We already have a curriculum. We have to have a curriculum, though. We don't have to, have, we have to have a director of curriculum. Well, so if you want to make it clean. <coughs> so the two directors. The old one. The yeah. new one, I mean. The new one is on there. All the way to the yeah. right. Yeah. Not the old one. With the understanding that the assistant superintendent the position is still there. Whether it's filled or not, I, I would, it would, it would just be, we, we fund the position? Like, well, keep we it in the it, budget? Well, we fund it, we don't fill it. That's what I'm saying. Like, so if we decided not to fill it, or, or, or if we decided to keep it open, then we would just have to just fund it. Like, I just don't, I just, I question whether or not we'd be able just to fund a position like that just on, on a whim. You know, like I, you wouldn't, wouldn't be filling this one. You'd slide that money over to that one. Right. Make that one different. I not in our budget. Well, it'd be a revision of the budget. Yeah. But then, what if we chose to say, hey, we do you want an assistant superintendent? At that point, we wouldn't have the funding because we would then be funding three directors of. Other programs. Yeah. I'm like I'm a fan of attrition. I'm a fan. I'm a fan of attrition, but I'm a fan of attrition. But we can use the same process to just not hire a director of whatever, or just not hire this as a superintendent. You can apply that same thought to all the positions on the chart if you wanted to. Correct. Don't mean why would it not be on the chart? The purpose is again, why would it not be on the chart? So the system superintendent's not on that new chart. What do you say? So, so on the on the old chart, so we know director of curriculum wasn't assistant superintendent, right? Right. It was somebody else. Right. And she left. So and all of a sudden everything settled. We'll spread that back out. Yeah. Right. Well, that's why I've been asking. I mean, right. we, we went from we left in December, the end of December, till we're almost at the end of school, and we don't have anybody for a director of curriculum, and it leaves our people hanging. Well, we split. We split two people. We have one with six twelve, and we have one with uh, K five. And, and they're and supervisors. They are not directors. So you wouldn't be creating another director. You do not currently have a director of curriculum. No, but the position there. Under the old chart, it's not there. But we have had it for years. Okay. I'm just trying to clean it up. Oh, okay. You're not hiring necessarily another quantity of person. 
we have all of these in place except for the director of auxiliary services and director of curriculum right now. When other people are hired, it may be it may become a director of curriculum. Okay. That supervisor we'll work with. Or the new person we hire that may be let, let me let me stop you there and I apologize to the gentleman who filled out this green card. I got sidetracked by discussion from the board members. Usually this takes place after we hear from you. So uh, if you'll go ahead and step up to the mic and give us your name and address and you, hey, you may give some give, give us the wisdom we're looking for. Yeah. Are, are you a deacon? No, sir. You had to be. I'm a Baptist preacher. You had to be a deacon. Well, uh -huh. <laughs> thank y'all very like much. Probably why I'm not a deacon. <laughs> I get it. I get it. Thank y'all very much for letting me come tonight. And thank you, though, for taking that sidebar because it did answer quite a few of my questions in the discussion uh, that's been had already tonight. Uh, my name is... Name and address. Yes, name and address. My name is David Free. I'm the pastor of Magnolia Baptist Church in Ragley. My address is 1922 Magnolia Church Road. And uh, I love South Boulevard High School. That's why I'm here tonight. A few of the things that I want to talk about and ask uh, as far as the organizational chart goes... Uh, I come with experience for this. Uh, I have 15 years as a pastor and 10 years of leading the Louisiana Christian University and New Orleans Baptist Theological Seminary on their board of directors, uh, managing budgets of well over $100 million and well over four to 700 staff members. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, your parish has just over 900 staff members and you're looking at a budget of about $89 million. And so I'm coming to you with likened experience of what it's like to make changes in your organizational leadership. Uh, COVID-19 showed us that we need more organization in our leadership in Boulevard Parish, hands down. Uh, as we would go to our schools, we could see the utter chaos that rained down, that came directly from everywhere, right, to our, right down to our high school offices, to our lower elementary offices, which went right into our communities, to our parents, to our students, and we saw the effect that lack of organization can have. When it comes to organizational leadership, it is imperative that if we're going to make changes that we do that in a, in a way that is effective and in a way that is slow enough that everyone can keep up, but quick enough that the progress can be made effective. And so a few of the questions I have tonight, and for the sake of time, because even though I'm a Baptist preacher, I understand that we're going over time tonight, uh, I would just like to just ask a few of these questions and, and just step back and let y'all just do your thing. Uh, but some of the things that I would like to ask is what is the, the real end goal that, that this board would hope to accomplish by not filling the assistant superintendent role that you have very well established tonight, by the way, is not being removed uh, in the organizational chart. But what, what would be the end goal in not filling that position and in not having another well-certified person in that office? And what would be the plan for distributing those duties in a, in a good way to where they could be effectively done by an effective staff? And where will the funds be allocated that are used for that salary? Where will they go whenever that role is not filled? Uh, is there another position that it will go to? Will it just be taken from the budget? Uh, is there a more effective way that you could do this? Have all effective ways been looked at? And have other organizational charts that have been proven to bring a more effective outcome been looked at before we've made a conclusion on what we want to do? And do we have a better plan than figuring it out? You know, as a pastor, I'm all about that plan for figuring stuff out. I figure stuff out all the time. Uh, anytime you see me at church on Sunday, I'm still figuring out what we're doing because that's just part of the plan all the time. But when you're, when you're looking at running an $89 million industry with over 900 employees, just figuring it out is not enough. Our teachers deserve better. Our students deserve better. Our parents, that's what I am, we deserve better. Uh, we need more than we're going to figure it out. Uh, we saw what just a little bit can do to bring utter chaos to what I would call the most professional people in our parish that run this central office and that run our schools. We saw what kind of chaos can come when we're not organized and we don't know who's in charge. Another question I would ask is how does removing or not filling that role of someone who is more qualified benefit our students? Now, I have four daughters, three of which are in our school system now, uh, one that will be in the next couple of years and, and I, I would like to know how is it going to benefit my daughters to have less qualified people in this office. A uh, part of my education is studying education. And in studying education, I know that it matters to have people who are well-trained and well-qualified for those roles. 
And then I would also ask, what is the plan to transition our parish to this new chart if it's adapted? Uh, is there a, a plan to restructure and get everybody on board? Are we just going to set a new chart and then say, all right, guys, figure it out? Because I can tell you what, your principals are going to suffer because your principals aren't going to know what to do. Your central office staff is going to suffer because they're not going to know what to do. That's going to go to your front office, which is going to confuse your parents. That's going to go to your counselors, which is going to confuse your teachers, which ultimately is going to make working at our schools horrible. Just so you know, for the last six years, I have been the most active person in reaching out to my local school. I'm there almost five days a week. I'm praying over our teachers, praying over our students. I counsel over 45% of the teachers in our school uh, on a weekly basis. And I can tell you that over the last two years, their mental health has struggled greatly, drastically, which directly affects the students. My daughters spend more wake time with their teachers than they do with me. They do, and your children do too, and they do too if they're in school. And so the mental health of, of my children's teachers matter. And when the organization is not right here at the top, it's gonna to be even worse down there. If you're shooting a gun at something a thousand yards away, and you're a centimeter off here, you're going to be six foot off down there. And when we're off just a little bit on this organizational chart, we're gonna be off really bad at South Borgard, at DeRitter, at Maryville and Singer and East Borgard. It's going to be off very bad. So what I would ask you tonight is as you're considering adapting new organizational leadership, that you please put into effect a solid plan to make sure that it trickles down the right way to all of the people who are really affected so that my children can get the education that they need and the teachers in my children's school can know and have a good structure they can depend on. If they can't lean on a solid structure, that means every time they lean on you, they're going to fall down. We need them to be able to lean on you and be strong. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. You made, you made one statement about hiring less qualified. I, I missed that. Oh. My question was, is not hiring someone who is as qualified as an assistant superintendent, does that better, uh, better set us up for the future? If we, well, if, if we don't hire an assistant superintendent as per the one organizational chart, that would mean that instead of having two people here who are uh, the equivalent of Mr. Cooley, we would just have one. And does that make us a more effective school system to do just that? Okay, now I'll turn it back over to the board. You awake, Ms. Brown? Yes, sir. You gave me that light book. That's why I did Any further discussion? is doing and a good leader 
then I'm all for that. I am not saying that I don't want to fill the assistant superintendent's position, but I'm telling y'all right now, when I listen to Mr. Newsome, New Mud, whatever his name is, talk about the possibility that we could become a D or an F school, no, we've got kids failing because they don't get it. There is a teacher in the classroom who is directing them and showing them where to get on this Chromebook. I'm telling you, they're not teaching. And it's not their fault. This is what they are supposed to do. I am so against it. I think we should go back to books and to teachers who teach. I'm sorry, I'm on a soapbox, but we need it. We need it. We need leadership, and we need our kids to be taught by a person. I think that's what we've added. I hope we so. We are adding some supervisors who I feel like are doing that. I hope so. And you and I have had that discussion. We have. Mr. Cooley and I have talked many times. But the director of curriculum position, the only, what was the only reason why we haven't rehired it? That person did leave just because we knew we were going to have some changes. We yeah. want to put the best person in that position. That's, a, that's the reason I've been asking. Right. This, this has been three, four months now. And I get it. We, if we know we got somebody we can hire, then we need to make some changes. I would say we need to make changes at that point and move, switch people over. They can have to learn it sometime, or if you think they're strong enough, they go ahead and do it. But at the end of the day, we don't get to make that decision. And That's what we're working for, Mr. Mack. That's exactly what we're working for. The director of curriculum. Three, we brought in someone who has elementary experience. And we love her. She is awesome. The way it sounds, I may not have brought in some people. Okay, but we're trying. We're trying to bring those people in. We've Thank done you. our best. Thank you. So, what, what I'm hearing though is that the director director of curriculum position was not something that was holding back an assistant superintendent position since we did already have one at the same time. Correct. Right. And I, I don't mean to sound any bit disrespectful in any kind of way, but I have to wonder why, in a way that this plan is needed now next 30 days, next two months, when we don't necessarily know at this point, Mr. Tooley, if you will be staying. And as Mr. To Cooley told you, I'm going. No, that's what I'm saying. Okay. Mm -hmm. then, then I don't want to hear that. Okay? I haven't told you I'm going anywhere. Quit throwing Mr. Cooley's name around. Okay? Quit throwing it around. I mean, I have to say it just because it was brought up at the very beginning of this whole organizational chart, and then that's what. Uh, what? I'm just purely Okay, well, look, I think uh, basically where we're at on this is ultimately the decision comes down to Mr. Cooley. Except if you want a new director position. The board would need to authorize that. Now would be the time to do that. We haven't finalized the budget for the next year. Uh, so if there is a concern about money, it could be moved over or shifted over. Mr. Green, can I make a suggestion? Sure. We're having a special meeting, 23rd. Would it be possible to kind of capture the thoughts of the board from tonight on the agreement of most agreement of keeping the superintendent, but also having the director of curriculum. Are you possible to an entity? Can you add that in and then maybe we can vote on that? Then so no, we can get all have that on paper and feel comfortable. Oh, well, okay. Have that on. So, I'm sorry, well, I'm step that one. So, just, so, we're going to meet again on the 23rd, sounds like, right? Monday. Monday. So if you could cap, capture having the assistant superintendent 
on the on the chart, as well as the director of curriculum. And then you know, put there, let us take a look at that. But actually right now, what how are we operating? We have an assistant superintendent? Correct. And we did have we did have a director of curriculum. We did have one. So what what are we changing? Well, well basically we're not gonna vote on the chart. We're not going to start. Had. When? We had a director of curriculum and we have an assistant superintendent today. It just the director of curriculum has not been filled. Or but, it but has it, been it, partially filled. Right? Yeah. So we, we're not we, creating we a new a, positions. If you keep what you have, you have an assistant superintendent and you have a director of curriculum position. You're going to go through a director of auxiliary services. Oh, That's the only thing All right, so we're going that would different change. direction. No, that, that, that used to be a supervisor. Huh? We were talking about the director of, director of curriculum, but really, really what we're talking about is acting. Well, you can change the supervisor. That's a new position. Director. Director. Direction. It does say action item, but it discuss well, the parish but what I'm saying is short. This chart, we don't want to tie any superintendent's hand with this chart. Boy, it's all how we got it. What if he, he decides, well, based upon who I hired here uh, for director of curriculum, they may have more expertise, you know, also moving some of the duties around or, or whatever. Why, why is it even on the agenda? It was a way to present what he planned to do. In other words, the super, assistant superintendent was retired. You're going to fill it, just come in and tell us you're going to fill it. If you, there are some things you might want to do differently, tell us that. I think trying to make it easy on us, he's saying, here's how we're operating right now, or how he's operating right now. And one thing to consider was not filling the assistant superintendent's position at this time, not to eliminate it, but to maybe use some of those resources in a director of auxiliary service to try to get us going on some of these projects that we seem to, you know, uh, seem to be slow. I don't have a problem with that. Let's put the position on the chart. I mean, it says we're voting, to, we're taking action on the organizational chart. Pretty clear. That's correct. That's what that says. And the assistant superintendent on the But I would only ask so if we leave it the way it is, you're going to go to a director or the assistant superintendent, still going to have curriculum, all these duties that they had. All you're going to do is add directors, auxiliary services. Right. So basically, all we're doing, because you already have a supervisor on auxiliary services. That's a good director. You're going to move that supervisor to bring over. And it'd just be a, a money deal. And to make sure the director of curriculum is in place. I just want you to look at it. And Mr. Cooley, you're comfortable with this as far as how you feel like everything would like? I, 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 we, if we want the assistant superintendent position, we will move forward with that. I also feel like we need someone over the auxiliary services if that is about. And that needs to be a director, not a supervisor. I would like for it to be a director so that they can move forward. Well, I like your chart. <coughs>
moving to create a director of supervisory services positions and how do you, what's the term to use for you to proceed right. with filling the assistant superintendent Correct. position? Correct. And to proceed with it. I mean, he's got that. And to fill the director of Well. Did you say that right? Well, I said create the position. Well, because the director of curriculum is on here, but we do have to create the director of auxiliary services. Well, what I should have said, I thought that's what I said, was to create a director of auxiliary services position and... Field the director of curriculum and maintain a consistent superintendent. And yes, that's about? what I meant. I mean, I don't know that we have to give you authority to fill the position that's already there, <coughs> whether it's assistant superintendent or director of curriculum. But, but however y'all want to... Well, so if, if we only have to make a motion then to create the new director, then I guess then as a board well, member... Well, let's do it I this way. And, and fill vacant positions. Okay. Move which would be the director of curriculum and the assistant yeah, superintendent. Okay. Yes. Is that? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. okay, so the motion is to create a director of auxiliary services and to move forth with filling that position and the other vacancies. Director of curriculum and assistant is there a second to her motion? I almost want to hear it read again. Can you repeat that? <laughs> Sir? Uh, to move to create a director of auxiliary services position and to fill all vacant, fill that position and the other vacant positions in place which would be the director of curriculum and the assistant superintendent. I just have to wonder about funding. Pardon? Funding. Well, I mean, are we able to fund? Yes. Uh, well, if we're authorizing them to fill them, we've got to find the funding, and now would be the time to do it in this 2022. 20, minor from supervisor to director. Yeah, that's, that's what, it's just a, it would just be a, it wouldn't be a whole, just, just a little bit more. It would essentially be a title change. I yeah, think. but a little bit more pay, not a, right, not a whole nother. Mm -hmm. Again, we're not going up in quantity of people, right? Mm -hmm. We'll be filling the positions that are available. But, so under that plan, the assistant superintendent really doesn't do curriculum or anything. He just has directors that answer him. Well, it could be it could be that they are over curriculum as we've had in the past. But if you if you put this director of curriculum, I may mean, not fill it. Okay. They are if they are in charge of curriculum. Okay. Miss Cunningham was here. I didn't have a director of curriculum. She was the director. Okay. That's so, a over okay. so it wouldn't be as much money. There you okay. go. Is it, yeah, is it Ms. Jackson's motion to fill it though? I'm sorry. Is it Ms. Jackson's motion to fill that position? That's what she wanted to do. Well, but I mean, he's saying. If necessary, we would fill it. Okay, so do we need to reward that? It is an available position if needed in the organization of Charleston. You have an assistant superintendent that is very strong in curriculum, then you're probably not going to need a director. Right? Well, since spending money, we don't have to. Correct. Mm -hmm. So, create a director of auxiliary services, that position, fill it, assistant superintendent, and other positions as needed, if necessary. Second, I'll second your motion. 
discussion. Do I have a clear outline up? Okay. That's all the discussion I have is we didn't tell him to hire anybody. We're not hiring anybody. Because we're not we're not supposed to be. You're correct. Okay. Just the bait. All in favor? Indicate so by saying yes. 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 All opposed? Indicate so by saying no. No. Mr. Weldon? Any others? No. Well, we get to do this again on the 23rd. Uh, any other business? Hearing none, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Send on Miss Captain. Second by Miss Captain. Cassie is not here because a family member. Yes. A family member? Yes. Family member? I do not know. But she is with the family members. Yes. So. Pretty close. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. That's why I wanted to know. Did we walk through the plant? Try to find out. Who made the motion to adjourn? Uh, Ms. Bruner? Yes, sir. Second by Ms. Companion. All in favor in case all by saying yes. We just need to clarify something. Oh, I thought she was going to read up the soda. I was going to read up the soda. I was going to read up the soda. I was going to read up the soda. Maybe he has a